First impression of the map. It's a 9 megabyte download. Why would you not download it? I mean, it's different. I like that we're expanding into the Middle East. I don't like that roadblock, but you know, that's just a thing. How do you upgrade to tier 3, Jack M? I think you do it on the subscriptions page, Jack M. Or no, you can do it at the top of the page. You know where it says subscribe? I think if you drop that, if you click that and drop it down, you can upgrade that, I think. Miss Jackie Chanji, thank you for 15 months. Well, the reason they make it so small, Connor, is because all it's using the assets out of the Pro Mods um, pack. So you have to have Pro Mods when you have this. You get, yeah, you do, Jack M. If you go, if you go tier two, if you, you can see what emotes there are, Jack M, on the, on the thing when you click the emo button next to chat. If you tier two, you get the uh, the golden nut, and tier three, you get the classic emo. Class is the best one, Dave. If you bought me more Nando's, I would T3 sub. <laughs> Boys, once a year, not enough. <laughs> No, I've not seen the UFO in my summer car since the first time last week. Turn right. Does it battle rabbit? I didn't know that. Keep right. That's then weird. Turn right. Turn right. I guess if you pay for tier 1 sub, you can't upgrade to tier 2 with Prime. Um, I actually don't know, Connor. Um, I, I think what would happen is, if you took your tier 1 Prime sub and upgraded it to Keep tier it. 2, you would then be paying for tier 2 from then on, and your Prime sub would be used on something else. So, I mean, I don't know if you sub to other people, Connor, but, like, if you did, you could use your prime sub on one of them and use your paid sub on me. It wouldn't make any difference to me, but that allows you to upgrade if that's what you want to do. But I don't think you can, like, take the prime element and add on top of it. I think you have to either prime or sub. Pay sub. Keep left. Oh man, we're going past Tel Aviv. I wanted to actually go in there. Mega fan, watch Trucking Diaries EU and see what I do. Keep left. The only problem with having to take the ferry to get to the south part is the ferry basically 
pushes your time into the night, then you can't see anything, which is really annoying. Well, if I cheat the time forward, I'd need to get rid of the trailer first, really, otherwise we'll burn time on the trailer. Go straight on. Like, that's the one thing you can't do in this game, is make time go backwards. You can only ever make time go forward. Thank you, Wolfpack. Well, we did fill up not long ago, Jimmy. Might see a nice sunrise in a minute. Happy anniversary, the dudeness, thank you for um, three months, tier two. Thank you, dudeness. Sabrina, not used Sabrina for a long time. Uh, HSC, I think this is a default UK one, the posh one. You passed on uh, you passed on your driving test for two weeks. Tomorrow we'll be the first time driving on the M1. Do you know what? Mr. Slater, you know what I've always found utterly weird about the British driving test is the fact that you're not allowed to drive on a motorway. Wait a sec, where are we going now? You're not allowed to drive on a motorway whilst you're learning to drive. And when you when you pass your test, which has never and you've never been on a motorway, when you pass your test with no experience or training, you are then completely allowed to drive on a motorway. And then you wonder why, when you go on the motorway, there are so many idiots who have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> I've, it's always blown my mind about the British driving test. What did it change to, Heyman? Your car is a 3.3 litre. Oof, good luck with the fuel build. Whereas I think I remember I remember Tharox telling me about the German driving test and how they have to I think there's like a night element, there's a motorway element, I think there's even a like a raining, like wet element to it, I can't remember. But you have to have done training and all that stuff. As HD5 driver there needs to be something in the British car test, past the basic of how HDVs work and stopping distances. I know mate. I mean the problem is like Braking distances are explained, but it's just a number that they have to learn. But like you say, they don't they don't understand the braking distance of a truck and they don't understand the acceleration of a motorbike. So, you know, as a as a motorbike driver well not at the moment, but you know, I've done a lot of driving on a motorbike. I the number of times a car has been at a T junction and the driver's looked at me, coming at him and then just looked at me, looked away, and pulled out on me. Because they've no idea how quickly you can be on top of them. 
They have no... They, they assume you travel the speed of a car. And the same thing will apply to, to trucking. Like you say, in terms of braking and braking distance. Like, they'll cut in front of you and, and hit the brakes. And you've got a lot of weight to stop, but they don't understand that. Or say you're, like, on a hill and there's a lot of parked cars and a truck's coming up the hill and you're going down the hill, I'll pull over. Because I know it's a real pain for him <laughs> to stop and give way. And it's a lot easier for me. On. You know, it's just stuff like that. Ooh, that's nice. You had to get a seven-seater for your family. Yeah, but it didn't have to be 3.3 .3 litres. <laughs> Paid for advanced driving classes on motorways. Fair play. Most people don't. Severely, the driver tests on all types of road, day and night, and also sunshine and rain. That's how it should be. Happy also, they should do what they do with motorcyclists. Like, I don't, I don't think they do this with car drivers, do they? With motorcycles, they limit the power output of the bike that you can drive for the next two years. But in a car, I think you can be 17, pass your test, and pretty much the only limit to the powerful car that you can get is how much insurance premium you're willing to pay. Go straight on. Well, no, Charlie doesn't, it doesn't. Like, if you've got rich parents, you can afford five grand on insurance, you know? But why do they, why do they sort of limit the power on your motorbike, but not in the car? And yet it's proven that, statistically, most accidents are between, like, 18 and 24 years of age. That's why the premiums are insane. Thank you for two months, Truck Simfen. Uh, Scottish King, thank you for almost two years. You're welcome. Uh, Baz, part of my actual test was driving on the motorway, but I had to have at least four training hours on the motorway before being allowed to take the test. That's how it should be, Baz. Granola Girl, thank you for half a year. Finally, six months, Silver Acorn. Yay. Depends on your age when you take the bike test. Uh, no, I don't think it does. I think the first two years, you're restricted to like 400. No, it used to be 400 cc, and then they changed it, I think, to the power output. But I'm pretty certain that you're you're restricted on power for the first two years. I don't think that's age dependent, but admittedly, I've not looked at it for a while. 25 kilowatts in the Netherlands. Why do so many people undertake on the UK motorways? Um, actually, they don't. But far too many people stick in a higher lane than they should. That's a real big problem in the UK. Like sitting in lane 3 or lane 4 when they should move down to lane 2 or lane 1. That's a big problem. And I think if they're, the undertaking that happens is people getting frustrated with that. But it's still not a legal move in the UK. don't have the restriction on passing your driving test 1.4 litres in your neighbour past few weeks before me and got an Audi TDI. Yeah, as I'm saying, in cars there's no restriction. Go straight on. It doesn't matter what age, you can take a direct route to the full test. But, when you take the full test, what can you then drive, sm um, Smurf? 
because I'm sure I remember the full test still restricting. Uh, Diamond Tiger, the, the four videos have to be out by the end of September. That's the schedule. Any CC engine, that's just insane. driving for six years before you wait way up to two liter i think when i when i got my motorbike license i did it on a 100 cc yamaha after that i got a 250 cc honda did a bunch of miles on that then i went up to a 400 cc honda which was at the time i thought was fairly powerful and then after that i went to a 600 cc kawasaki had a bunch of kawasaki's i had the 600 the 636 then i got a one litre BMW, then I went and got a one litre Fireblade, and then I got a 1200cc BMW um, GS. But I just like literally worked my way up in stages. The very first time I got on a 600cc Kawasaki, I just thought this is ballistic, this is insane how quick this is. Like you can just kill yourself with that, you know? <laughs> it's, it's so powerful. And then one day you get on a Fireblade and you think, Okay, <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> well, that's crazy, Diamond Tiger. I'm sure it used to be not like that, but I don't know. Public safety, Dan. Thank you for 11 months. I mean, they talk about they talk about road safety and saving lives and all this claptrap. But at the end of the day, if you're 17 and you can go out in like a ballistic car or a ballistic motorbike, it's just, it's crazy. You don't have the experience. I don't know. I don't think smart motorways are the worst thing at all. It's been, it's been scientifically proven that if you slow down the traffic to a lower average, everything goes quicker. It's been proven. You had a 636 and that's enough. Yeah, that, they're pretty sprightly. Kawasaki's back end isn't as solid as the Fireblade, though. The Fireblade had, was really planted compared to the Kawasaki. Yeah, that's the other thing, True Serum, is like motorbikes, when you lay them on the ground, um, can you pick them up again? <laughs> some of the some of the bikes right. are really difficult to get back on their feet kind of thing. Thinking of banning new drivers driving at night. Yeah, you see, I don't agree with that. I think that's a dumb idea. There's plenty of there's plenty of young people who, who have jobs that they need to get around at night. That's just a dumb idea. What they should be doing is training people to drive at night instead. Turn left. You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is now finished. Well, yeah, I don't agree with banning people driving at night like that. Was that in the US after 9 pm with a permit you can't drive? What? At, at what age? Well, smart modes, just coming back to the smart motorway thing. Smart motorways, the whole concept is to not have a hard shoulder, right? So you get that extra lane, so you can use the lane much more effectively than if it's just for breakdowns and breakdowns aren't that common now relative to what they used to be because cars are more reliable 
And if somebody does break down and has to use that lane, well, they just put a big X over that lane. Yeah. And otherwise, they can use them to control the speed of the, of the cars. So when the density of the traffic goes up, they lower the speed down and everybody averages a better speed. Because you don't get that horrible effect where the, the tra traffic density is really high and then people, somebody touches the brake or, or changes lane and does something stupid and everybody breaks and then the shock wave goes backwards. You know, which is what happens when people travel too quickly and the traffic's too dense. And you get these weird situations where the traffic literally stops and nobody knows why. <laughs> Captain Flint, like a glove. Simming for the win. Thank you for two years. Enjoy the acorn, sir. Let's have a quick look around this town, shall we? We've actually got a couple of discoverables here. And then, amazingly, another couple of discoverables here. King Awesome, which, which tax do you pay that covers the roads? I'm going to sneeze again. I'm not. Yes, I am. I'm all good. Road tax. Turn left. It's not road tax though. It's known as vehicle exercise duty. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Let's have a look around. Islet. Is that what we say? Islet. Service center, palm trees. <coughs> Whoa, can you not do that, Doyle? Get ready to turn left. Turn left. Hashtag not popular move, Doyle. Not his fault. Near the neighbour shouting jinxes. Can the neighbour what? Shouting jinxy the cat. Jinxy the cat? The ginger and white cat that jumps on the sheds. Oh, that one. Yes. He knows you know. Does he? Hang on, darling. Come on, noisy. Come on, Here we go. Say hey. Yeah, you're looking a bit sheepish, barking like that at everybody. Nope. Pressing Any minute. <laughs> All right, Dolls is like pressing buttons on the wheel now. Are you trying to troll me, bro? <laughs> the least hairy one out of the squirrel clan, Dave. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Chances of your Nando's are going down, Dave. <laughs> Hey Dave, are you an insomnia? I can't remember. Are you doing the BYOC again? You're so cute. Aww. Hey 
it's schmacking time. Doyle wants his spa day. Oh, he does. Okay. What was that? No, it wasn't so much dropped on the floor, though. My check from the DVLA. Oof. <laughs> Is that sign Doyle's having enough? <laughs> The chair's giving way. Yeah, <laughs> How many smackers does Dole go through in a week? Not too many. We try to uh, make sure he doesn't just snack his way to victory. Eats proper food. You just go through rodeos. He, he does a lap of the garden party, chasing off Jinxie the cat, and then he comes in. So How do you know his name is Jinxie? Can you hear a shout in Jinxie? Mm. Yeah, but I didn't know the shouts in that cat. That mm. Have you told him to move it? Huh? Told him to move it, yeah. Oh, you don't have nice. Right, Dolly. Say bye bye. High five. Don't be rude. <laughs> bye bye, minions. <laughs> Oh, pal. No droppage with the smack or doll, sorry. You broke it. Hey? Broke you. No, it's locking it. See? No, it just moves, look. See? The arms turn. Please. Uh no, it's a couple. Nobody right. saw a thing. Then turn right. Nobody saw a thing. Turn right. We just drove over a coke can. I like a hotel. That's nice. Caution! Please mind the speed limit. Wait, what are we waiting for? Welcome back, traffic warden. Oh, I've got the checking documents. Caution, please mind the speed limit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I win. <laughs> you get I bet you get that kind of pettiness at these places. Wait, can we go through that one? The one this scumbag's going through. Is there one over there? Oh, there's one over here, look. Caution. Please mind the speed limit. Oh, shush. Oh, yeah, Bowman's. Come on, come on. It takes so long. Caution. Please mind the speed limit. Boom! Get ready to turn right. A cabba discovered. Turn right.
interesting buildings. Get ready to turn left. Recruitment agency. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Whoa, look at all the flags in the roundabout. One. Wait, why is he giving way? Exit now. Jim and Sonic. He's a fan. Wall. Another Renault? What? You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is now finished. That's really strange. <laughs> Why is it like another Renault dude? Are they just really popular here? <laughs> Spreading like weeds. There's actually a port over here. Oh, there's a container port down there. What does that say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, road reserved for the future, I reckon. Uh, Fatty, my lord, I have to admit I don't find the exterior of that Renault a complete disaster. I have failed you and my family, except a raven to deliver a handwritten apology on a scroll this coming week. It's only because my hand polished that said turd, Fatty, so you're okay. Oh, is that the Saudi flag? Yeah, but what does it say? So, what are all these flags then? Are they all like, I don't know, countries in the Middle East or something? IUB East. Thank you for subbing. Welcome to the house, sir. Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, and all the Arab countries in Lebanon. Nigeria. Why have they put them all on this roundabout? Who's the kingpin in the middle? Iran. Interesting. Job market. Hmm. Interesting how there's no jobs going west down the coast though. Really want to drive back up north? I think the job length is um, the problem here. Welcome back, Nutter. Prefer job length.
you hit the job market system on it'll do it, it there you go it just needs an overhaul it could be so much better like the variety of jobs is frustrating at times right, i've got two hours to get to this how far away is it Let's just go there. It's going to take too long. That's how you can cheat in a single player game, but alright. Foss and walk back. I mean, it's either that or a drive, though, and when we get there, there's no job. I mean, if that's preferable, okay. <laughs> How many hours do you have in ETS2 in Steam? 1,808, I think. Uh, the job distance command you can use there is a couple there's set job distance and set job distance limit oof really not a steering axle either. Can we get out this way? Uh, Brave Bavarian, there's not a list that I'm using. There's a list of mods that I have used or am using, but to try and keep my current list up to date is just not possible. Wow, look at the wheel. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. How can it be raining in this desert? Rip sign. more fitting weather. Yeah, this is quite a wide load actually. Is that a different airfield? The heck? At the roundabout, take the second exit. Exit now.
that was literally too hot to hold the cup. Like, if I didn't use the handle, I wouldn't have even to been able to hold it from here to there without getting kung fu burns on my uh, arm. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, you've obviously never seen Kung Fu series. With David Carradine. Beat up! Welcome back. <laughs> Foster and welcome back. Thanks for the reference. Grasshopper. <laughs> now Beacon knows what I'm on about. So does Pringle. Caution. Please mind the speed limit. Gosh, please mind the speed limit. Oh, shush about your speed limit. It's not a mod, the document, the, the, the border checks have been in the game for a while. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on here. I don't think so, Mr. Bus Driver. I don't think so. He was trying to push it. That's exactly what he was trying to do. It's actually quite a nice looking map. I like it because it's quite, you know, it's quite different. It's why I used to like TSM in North Africa, because it, it just had a completely different feel to it. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. A casino in Israel. down. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you don't get a lot of desert in ETS2. That's exactly what it is. Sandstorms like Mad Max game. I remember those. What is that? This looks like a border crossing. Speed camera? You see that? There's a 10k limit going through it. There's like some weird checkpoint. One shot crazy. Thank you for Twitch, baby. That was like some odd checkpoint. But without a barrier. Yeah, it had a camera and a 10k limit. Weasel, no problem, mate. 
try a phone or a tablet or a different browser maybe. This bit reminds me of like driving over Iceland, but it's basically sand instead of snow. No, they've not bought Turkey in, I don't think. I think they will at some point, but Turkey's pretty big. You've asked me that before, make a fan. A job from Iceland to here, Baz, would be amazing. Imagine that. The thing is, you can't get the job engine to sort of generate a job like that. Thrace has been added in the Black Sea expansion, so kind of Turkey. Mm, not really. Alright, Wobbly Weasel. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, Langevel, if you're going to do a job like that, you kind of want to get paid at the end, you know? <laughs> my tea weak or strong? I think neither is the answer. I definitely don't have it weak. I can't stand weak tea. You can never have enough cheddar, Langevel. If the moon was made of cheese, we still wouldn't have enough cheddar. Dave Cameron, how are you doing, sir? Good evening to you. Edam? Nah. Get yourself a good, strong, mature cheddar cheese. Now you're talking. You have to leave the tea bag in, Connor, with green tea. Otherwise it doesn't taste it very much. It takes like four or five minutes to um, for the taste to come out. With the job limit to refresh the market then check yeah I mean I do get those monster jobs bads but the chances of getting from Iceland to Israel are pretty slim get ready to turn right turn right oh wow I don't know if it was here that's a small road Blimey. Uh, and Wilco, welcome back. Is this a one way road? <laughs> hmm. Red Lester's alright. Red Lester's a very easy, easy eating cheese, but a strong cheddar's a lot nicer. Well, if anything comes the other way, it's going to be like my summer car. Because, you know. <laughs> you just finished a block of vintage cheddar. Nice. DJ Sutty, I'm not saying your name for a while. Welcome back. How are you doing, sir? What have you been up to? Marmite and cheese pasty. Pasty, sorry.
This is an interesting desert road. Jason B, thank you for 30 minutes. Two and a half years, I like that. I don't like spicy cheese. In fact, I can't stand spicy cheese or chili chocolate for that matter. I love chili. I love spice. I don't like mixing chocolate and cheese with it. <laughs> it's just me. I can't watch live as you had a minimal internet speed. All large teams kept buffering. Where was this? You just got... Uh, oh, you're going to get Surviving Mars, Dave. Well, you need to get the Green Planet DLC if you're going to get it, Dave. Break down on this road, blimey. I can imagine it being like 45 Celsius down here. Oh, I see, Dave, right. Oh, yeah, chili peanuts are nice. Yeah, the Green Planet DLC, Dave, is the one that lets you terraform it into a, a green planet, which is kind of the best way. And it also gives you, like, I think pig farms and that kind of thing. It certainly makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, but Baz, I mean IRL. If you was here in August, I'm pretty certain it would be a lot hotter. Caution. Please mind the speed limit. What's he talking about? It's 60. Hemel's Root Advisor, Larson Easy. It's in the mod spreadsheet. Tommy, have you ever experienced 45 Celsius dry heat? I have. It's like you've got your head in the oven. Stefan, thank you for 24 months. Happy anniversary. Referek, you are blasting through a th I know. Ready to turn right. I know. I've got my sat nav voice nagging me. I don't need you as well. Turn right. Stefan still. Oh, I think so. Naggy nag nag. <laughs> Yeah, it's not fun, is it, Odo? It's not fun. So that's what I was saying about breaking down on this road. And then just having to stand around in 45 Celsius heat waiting for somebody to turn up. And about at night it gets pretty cold. Fiber now, so it's nice. Um, I'm not sure, Bowman's. It's possible. You sold your house, Dave. Does that mean you're actually going to move? Is it sold as in offer accepted or sold as in contracts exchanged? And have you found your house where you're going to go to? Get an Uber, Diamond Tiger. You reckon there's an Uber goes down this road? Okay.
<laughs> yeah, that's what Mad Max does, Pringle. <laughs> Get an Uber camel. Can you imagine the Uber app if he was in this country? And instead of scrolling through and seeing, like, Uber, Uber XL, Elite, you'd be like, chicken, pig, camel. <laughs> uh, I think I'll take a lift on a chicken. <laughs> I don't know what the phone signal's like. Oh, the donkey, yeah. Yeah, the mid-range donkey. Uh-oh, there's a car down there. Oh, it's okay, he's not coming Get this way. To turn left. Yeah, I've got merch. Go to the Teespring website. Teespring slash squirrel, I think it is. Town's called El Outage. Why is it still a 60 speed limit through here? That seems a bit weird. Get ready to turn left. Turn left. Wow. Okay, another fan. City? Wow. I tried to make it look as nice as possible. Stick on a pig. You have to wait for Cario, but that's uh, what Pro Mode say it's ready when it's ready. They all say that now, like SCS says that, Pro Mode say that, PMDG say that. It's ready when it's ready. Friends 100, thank you for 34 months. person thank you for your support welcome to the house thank you for the nifty welcome guys 
Caro is 200k, I think, from the north coast. Really? That's quite a far. Who's the closest to a 100 month sub? The 72 month subbers, Diamond Tiger, Whiteland, Fire Rocks, Wackaday, Bengo, all those guys. 72 months, that'll be another 28 months before they get to 100. Now that's a lot of months. Nothing, Whiteland, I just said you're beautiful. Jack Garrett, welcome back, Twitch Baby 9. Yacht 7 for that to happen. Um, yeah, that's going to happen in Yacht 7, isn't it? Because 24 months from now, and then another four months on top. Hang on, July, August, September, October, November. That's going to be very, very close to Christmas 2021, I think. Is that right? Quick maths. Christmas 2021, about November time. We'll be hitting 100 months up. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Go straight on. Go straight on. Okay. Mm, I don't know, Diamond Tiger. I mean, if you got to Dan's Gaming, like, he was one of the first to get subbed, uh, partnered, I think. So he's got, I think he's got, like, seven year subs, maybe. That's probably the most. Or maybe eight. I'm not sure, actually. I've no idea, my games. No idea. Remains to be seen. Nine is the guy who came up with what democracy? Subbing? Is he? I've got a feeling Day Nine's going to be at that wedding next week, you know. Because I know Sacriel's a big fan of him. Wouldn't surprise me if he invited him. Mace, welcome back. Caution, please mind the speed limit. Wait, why is it still ten? Keep right. And then Something wrong right. with the map, though. Turn right. Day nine at the first hundred months sub early this year. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I suspect Dan's gaming will be hot on his heels. I used to like watching Dan when he when he was sat on his sofa at home and he used to play all these like single player adventures like Skyrim and stuff. I used to love watching that stuff. But I don't know. It's kind of like since he moved into the studios with the um, the other guys, it's kind of lost its homey feel. It's just not the same. <laughs> Scania, that would be so cool, man. But I don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I saw the new Call of Duty online. Aren't they talking about over a hundred players? For the Call of Duty online thing. They're saying they can support at least a hundred players. 
He goes back to Skyrim now and again. Like, he likes to spend two days modding it. Like, he basically streams himself modding Skyrim. And then he plays through it. Yeah, you see, that's what worries me in Whiteland, because you remember what Battlefield 5 was like, and Battlefield 5 is was like 64 players, and that was a mess. And Call of Duty is going to be 100 player plus, and that's just going to be an actual mess. I remember um, one of the first like hundred player games was what's it called? That's that um, the space one that had three factions, and you deployed into like you could team up in your in your faction, and you deployed into um, a big planetary battle with like a hundred people, and you had to capture sectors. Planet side, yeah, that's it. Planet side. That was a hundred player, um, and it worked pretty well. Except the problem is with when you've got a hundred people in a server, and you're trying to battle, you can only basically battle at the borders. So wherever, the, you know, an enemy sector and a and your sector like border with each other, you can obviously battle to try and push the line back. The problem is, it's like you focus on one of your sectors with your squad and all the rest of it, and you, you capture it, and you look at the map, and you've lost like two other sectors because nobody went down there. And you just, um, you never really get a sense of being able to make a difference because the game is so big and you're basically fighting for like a small piece of it. And unlike something like Battlefield where you win the game and it's like, yay, we won. This, ga this battle just keeps going. So you never get this kind of sense of accomplishment. It's it's weird. Like it should work, but it doesn't. Now it was Planet Side 2. Adam 10, welcome back. Uh Biohazard 3K. Thank you very much for subbing Biohazard. Welcome to the Net House, sir. So I do, you know, these kind of games where they've got a lot of players. I just, I've never seen one yet that works. And so when Call of Duty are talking about having so many players, I'm just thinking, well, is it going to work really? Welcome to Porkside. I don't think I'm going to look at Planet Zoo now. I, I mean, I might change my mind, but at the moment I have no plans to look at Planet Zoo. I'll review it nearer the time. I just kind of feel it's going to be like Jurassic Park meets Planet Coaster. Get ready to turn left. Turn left. You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is now finished. Oh good, you stop nagging. McCoy's are good, Connor. Salt and vinegar and McCoy's are great. Flaming hot monster munch are great. 
Salt vinegar, squares of grey. Well, that's one way of breaking. A glove, not quite flamingo. <laughs> I'm not really looking for any more cool voice packs to be honest. Oh, Walker's mix-ups. Walker's mix-ups are too good. I have to stay away from them because I just eat the whole bag and the bag's, like, massive. But quite often they'll have them on sale and they call up for, like, a quid each. And then I just buy five or six of them. <laughs> Let's have a look around this port. Wow, there's actually a runway here. You, you'd be lucky to take off anything from that runway. <laughs> Look at it. Like, to scale, it's about 150 metres long. Uh, no, but uh, well, I don't have any contacts for Transport Fever 2. Is that drivable? Oh, we came over that, I think. Yeah, we did actually. Yeah, we came over that one. not bad. Quick way of having a look around, isn't it? Well, nine o'clock is upon us. What would you like to do to the Renault? Thank you, Mighty Luke. Really love and appreciate your streams. Love the My Simicon videos. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. What do you want to do with the uh, with the Renault, then? <laughs> Drop it in the water. Respect it. Oh. Oh. I'll show it the respect it deserves. The problem is there's no mountains around here. So what now? I don't think the boat will be clippable. Oh, it might be, actually. We could try it. See if we can smash it through. Give it a whirl. Um, missed. <laughs> oh, nice bounce. Nice bounce, bro. I completely missed. <laughs> That's not clippable, this is, though. Let's try and drop it in here. Welcome back, Nata. Oh, 
Oh boy. <laughs> we killed the start of the ship. Wow. It actually dropped down the side of the ship. Look at that. That's properly wrecked, that is. Guys, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. It is 9 o'clock. I'm going to head out. I've got a busy week. VR 180 filming and other stuff. And I shall be back on Friday at 1. I hope you can join me then. Remember, there will be no Sunday night trucking next Sunday. I am at a wedding next Sunday. Oof. So, uh, I'll have to leave it there. I'll be back Friday. I'll be streaming Saturday, but I won't be streaming Sunday next week. Have a great week, whatever you're doing. Thank you for all for your support. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And uh, I'll see you in a few days' time. By the way, um check out instagram because i'm gonna post pics when i'm at silverstone so um i'll try and check out well, i will be busy but i'll i'll I'll, fo I'll check out photographs at some point so uh check out the instagram if you want to see some pics anyway have a good week it'll soon be friday don't worry take it easy love you all good night <laughs>